Hi, I'm Dr. Judith Wollaston. I'm Director of, of Student Success and Retention at the College of Westchester, and welcome. And I would like to ask our, uh, our, our people here to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Wendy Ruoff. I'm counselor here at the College of Westchester Counseling Center. I'm a licensed master in social work. Hi, I'm Diana Tellis, and I am assistant dean and director of the counseling center here at the college, and I'm a licensed mental health counselor. So, hello everyone. Uh, as I said, I'm Dr. Judith Lulliston, and I am director of student success and retention at the college. And I've asked uh, two of our counselors to come here and talk about stress today. So I'm going to be asking them some questions about stress. So, Wendy, I'm going to ask you first, is it unusual to feel stressed as a student? No, not at all. In fact, it's, it's very normal to feel stressed and for many reasons. Um, I know we're preparing this for our online college and um, for lots of you, you might be uh, coming back to school after many years, not studying, not being in an educational environment. And uh, for lots of you, you probably have full-time jobs, so I imagine that's why you're doing your studies in an online environment. Um, perhaps you have the children you have to take care of. So uh, getting used to juggling all those responsibilities is obviously very stressful. How about you, Diana? Do you think there's anything, is it unusual for students to feel stressed? No, not at all. I think it's unusual if you don't feel stressed. And, and do you think can good things cause stress? Oh, yes. Lots of good things like starting a uh, new college, getting married. Can, Wendy, what about you? Do you think, what kind of things um, do you think good things can cause that would be stressful? Well, just as Diana said, um, things like getting married, having a baby, um, even having a promotion uh, in, in your job. Um, all these things can cause stress because uh, you're taking on different responsibilities and it can cause a whole new uh, schedule in your life, things that you have to deal with that uh, you haven't done before. So yes, certainly good things do indeed cause stress. So if we learn to manage our stress, does that mean that we don't feel stress? No, not at all. Um, we still feel stressed, but because we know how to manage it, it's, you know, we don't have all those uh, stressful behaviors. We recognize that we're feeling stress and we've got coping mechanisms to deal with the stress. So, uh, you know, that's, that's why we learn coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't send us for a loop when those stressful events do occur in our lives. Mm -hmm. So, could you tell us, like, what are some of the sy symptoms of stress? Well, symptoms for everyone, they're individual, so you're going to feel them differently than someone else. But common symptoms for stress would be uh, irritability, you know, there would be headaches, stomach aches, uh, maybe getting a little bit depressed or over anxious about something. Um, Wendy, do you have some other ones? Uh, you, you could get angry, you have mood swings because you're not coping well. well all of those things can. Uh, can be symptoms of stress, but it's important to note that not everybody feels the stress symptoms the same way. What's stressful to you might not be stressful to me. And uh, sometimes you might hear someone say, oh, you know, why are you so stressed out? That's nothing. Well, we're all different. We all have our different reasons for what stresses us out. So that's really important to remember. Right. So Wendy, what would you consider are the risks of ignoring the signs of stress? Well, just as uh, we mentioned previously, the, some of the symptoms of stress, those things can um, escalate and it can, uh, you know, develop into full-blown uh, depression or uh, inability to function, you know, uh, successfully. So those are some of the areas that you need to watch out for, why it's important to take care of your stress levels. It could also affect your, any kind of illnesses you're having, maybe high blood pressure or things like that too. So pay attention to it. Okay. You know, often we hear this, this phrase called self-care. What do we mean when we say that? What does self-care mean? Diana? 
Uh, Self-care is taking some time out to really assess where you're at at the moment or in the day or the week and see how you're doing. Um, you know, so often we like to take care of everyone else, but we forget about the person <laughs> that's most important really is ourselves. So it's taking time to do some things to take care of, of whatever our needs are. Yeah, so, some of those things can be uh, taking five minutes uh, just to breathe, relax. Uh, when you, it's to be self aware that something is not feeling right within yourself and to try and identify it. That, that's really to learn what your triggers are for stress so that you can do the things to uh, prevent the stress from increasing. Um, uh, so, oh, I was going to say something else, I can't remember what it was. <laughs> um, I, I have a question actually. Yeah. What You mentioned something about this triggers of stress. How does one learn what your triggers of stress are? How do you learn that? Um, well, you have to do some uh, self-awareness um, routines. Um, you know, when you have, you know, you can go on our website for one thing and you can get a full uh, list of all the stresses that occur. So when you go through all of those, you know, see if any of those apply to you and then you have to take five and try and figure out what, what caused it you know, when the onset was. Um, and then go through some of the remedies, some of the self-care remedies, and start implementing whatever works for you. Again, not every uh, self-care uh, method is going to be good for everybody. We're all individuals, and some will work for you, some will work for someone else. Right, okay. Um, you know, our students are very busy. so. How can they make sure they're caring for themselves and, and really, and, you know, take care of themselves, the student, the person, and everything else that they're doing? Yeah, well, again, if you could go on our website, we have, um, we have um, remedies for self-care that if you've only got a minute, if you've got five minutes, ten minutes, twenty minutes, there's all different types of things that you can do for different time periods that you have available. And, you know, because we're out to say, oh, well, I don't have to, I'm so stretched out, got so much to do, I don't have time to do anything. How do you expect me to do that when I'm so stressed because I've got all this stuff to do? Well, you know, we have to take time. That's the, you know, we have to be responsible for ourselves and do that. So it's like a vicious circle yes. that you say, I'm yes. too busy, I can't yes. take care of myself. And then you never get to be able to take care of yourself. That's right, yeah. yeah. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Right, right. Okay, well, there's another term that maybe you guys could clarify. Diane, why don't you take a, a stab at this, this, this term called grounding techniques. What are they? Well, grounding techniques is actually one way to help your stress level and your anxiety that's maybe associated with that. It's a way of bringing your mind and your body back into the now moment instead of thinking about future things that are happening or maybe past things that happened. So some examples of using grounding techniques would be to touch the chair you're sitting in or to look around the room and notice what colors are in the room and pay attention to that or maybe count tiles on the wall or think about what you had for breakfast that day. But these are all ways to bring your mind back to now instead of thinking about the 800 million things you have to do tomorrow and the next day. So. Okay. And, and, and just to, to conclude, what tools does the College of Westchester provide for taking care of stress? How can our students, you know, decrease their level of stress? And, and students anywhere have, you know, it's one of the busiest times of one's life. So, you know, I'm sure there is a lot of stress. And I was just wondering, what's the college providing for our students. Okay, well, uh, as we mentioned before, you can go onto our website, you can access it through um, Campus Cruiser, and you can uh, log on to MyCW, and from there you can go to um, Counseling Center, and uh, on our Counseling Center page you'll find a host of different techniques that can help you um, uh, deal with stress. Also, uh, from our um, Counseling Center webpage, there is a link to youlifeline.com, which is an excellent 
free source of information developed especially for college students which gives you again uh, no end of tools and techniques to deal with not only stress but all the other issues and problems that college students are confronted with. So um, those are just some of the, the ways you can cope with stress. Um, you can also call uh, the counseling center. Yes. And, and that's the, the number? number? The counseling center is? It's 914-831-0334. Or you could email us at counseling at cw.edu. Uh, also, if you want to, we know you're online students, but you're always welcome to come by our office. Uh, we're here uh, all day and on Monday and Thursday evenings and Saturdays until 2 o'clock. Um, you can just come by and, um, you know, just pop by to, to chat with us. Yeah. Well, that sounds great. Well, thanks so much. And I know, I guess another thing to add in, into the tool chest of, of stress managing things, it might be to have a really good sense of humor. Yeah. It does, yes. Um, we think so. I'm sorry, we, uh, we left that out, but yes, <laughs> it goes without saying that is a, a very, very valuable technique to manage stress. Yes. yes. Okay, guys, well, thanks so much. Thank you. Very helpful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.